who doesn't want to write a book? Every celebrity says, when they're asked about their projects, that they want to write a memoir or publish a novel, and they can. They have the resources. However, most people who want to write a book are normal people, and before the internet, their impulse to write a book went largely unexplored. The accessibility of the internet, however, has changed the long-standing publishing game from a game for the elite to anybody's game. The printing press and mass publishing started in 1454, and the only book published was the Bible. Restriction of the printing press through class divide and through the Catholic Church and through all of these institutions came soon after, and the publishing process became a lengthy one. It has remained a lengthy one for the course of its history, until probably about 20 years ago. Companies like Amazon started to allow you to publish books on your own and not even publish physical copies of books. And suddenly, everyone was an author. Self-publishing is a nuanced business with little regulation and major potential. Self-published is the idea that you can write, edit, and publish a book all on your own, at your own expense, with your own resources, and for your own cultivated audience. Self-publishing is a booming industry for authors who, for the first time ever, have resources, opportunity, and a community to pursue dreams that otherwise have fallen by the wayside. Mickey Fredericks, a mother of five and nurse by occupation, has published three books herself. She says she has always had characters and stories in her head. And about five years ago, she told her husband she was going to write a book. And she has certainly lived up to that statement. Fredericks has published three books in her time, as well as starting a small convention here in Iowa. The interest in self-publishing stemmed largely from a desire for control over personal work. At a larger publishing company, your work is controlled by others. You have an agent who picks up the book and then you work with the, pl the, with the company to change different aspects to fit the view of the public at the time. Someone else illustrates, someone else edits, and the book is no longer yours. Jillian Bergsma Manning puts the desire for full creative control nicely, saying, You're in control. You can decide on everything from the cover to the price, marketing to ebooks, book award submissions, and more. Those who work with some household names in self publishing are still able to maintain a good deal of an autonomy, but having your own company means you are in charge. The process of self publishing is as lengthy of a one as the process of traditional publishing if you are doing it right. The editing of the book is entirely up to you, but you have to understand that people are going to read it. You have to go through like you or someone else and read the book and look for editing errors. Oftentimes, self-published authors will find beta readers, other authors or communities who are willing to read their book and give them critique. Marketing of a book when you are self-published is a difficult and long process. You have to create the communities. Frederick says, I love reaching out to other authors and finding communities I fit with. People sometimes don't respond. If you have someone who doesn't know your brand, they are more inclined to go with someone they know over you, obviously. So you have to work at being recognizable. And when you are self-published, you are your brand, and you have to really put yourself out there. Fredericks has cultivated a business for herself. She has business cards, trademarked logos, websites, and a series of blog posts that influence her and her audience. She has friends and a community who reach out to each other and promote each other. This has been a years-long process for her, and for self-published authors, it's the reality of the craft. Marketing is effectively one of the most difficult parts of self-publishing because building that audience can be so frustrating and so rewarding. Having no one around to build that image, to understand what you need and how you need to present yourself can be a learning process for small authors. On the topic of audience selection, Forbes' Nick Morgan says, if your book is about new trends in IT, you might target heads of IT departments with major corporations, and so on. The point is to figure out who will actually read your book. And your brand. Being a brand is the nature of being a self-published author. Being an indie author or a self-published author means that you have to put yourself out there. You have to build a following. The realities of self-publishing are a cost both literally and figuratively. 
you are paying to edit this book, to publish this book. You have to buy the Photoshop, you have to purchase the copyright for the pictures, but also you have to spend time. Fredericks does not pretend that she doesn't make sacrifices to write these books. She says that her husband and children understand that sometimes it is work time and she has to give up things because these books are her passion. Your time, energy, and enthusiasm have to be in this book or you won't get the sales that you want. And as a small author, there's no point of trying to publish a book you are not passionate about. And then there is the competition. David Carnoy mentions all the potential evils of self-publishing. One of the unfortunate drawbacks is having a low barrier of entry into a suddenly hot market is that now everybody and their brother and sister is an author. It means that you're dealing with a ton of competition, some of which is made up of hustlers, charlatans, and a bunch of people in between. There are literally a million books published in the United States every year, taking into account ebooks and physical books. Small and self-published authors have a massive market to contribute to, and you have to be willing to fight through that market for people who want to read your work. This happens in places like book conventions. Conventions and communities are built and established over time and are everywhere in the United States. There is one major book convention in all 50 states and smaller satellite conventions that pop up everywhere. This is one of the changes in the industry that self-publishing has caused. Self-publishing has lowered the barrier of entry, yes, but it has also leveled the socioeconomic ability to publish a book. Everyone can write a book, and that means everyone is. The changing world of book communities is nuanced and difficult to explain. People often take one side, saying that it is amazingly positive or horrifyingly negative, without considering the fact that it can be both. The fear of publishing is that it is sort of unregulated, but most things start unregulated. Being able to level this playing field is the beginning of a changing of the process. One of these processes is the community. Mickey Fredericks and a fellow author, Lori Rattay, started the North Iowa Book Bash four years ago. She was inspired by going to a large summer convention in which she went to see one author and found people carting home literal carts of books. There was a hundred authors at this convention. They had no idea something like this even existed, and they were small published authors. So they started the Book Bash. It has roughly 30 local authors, and it has established a community in North Iowa that simply was not there before. There was not the resource for these authors to show up and to express about the things they cared about and to talk to other authors. This is happening all over the country and frankly the world. Small and self-publishing is changing a community of authors and readers into a community, into people who interact and connect with each other rather than the divide of author to readers. Not every author is going to be J.K. Rowling. They're not all going to be billionaires, but they are all people. The adaptivity of the culture of book conventions is important because it shows potential for the future. It shows potential for people to understand and communicate with books and interact and shape the way that they read and the places in which they read. So the business is a two-faced beast. Yes, it costs time and money and energy, and yes, sometimes the books are bad, but there are bad TV shows, there are bad blogs, there are bad web series. There is never going to be this sort of perfect moral idea of what a book should be. And being able to level the playing field is starting to get rid of all of the stigma around publishing books. So with time and with energy and with passion and money, the change of an industry is coming. And that's a very, very interesting thing to see. Self-publishing has raised new and interesting challenges in publishing, but is demonstrating the adaptability of an industry.